Thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. It's your boy Snake Venom S to the V. Welcome back. This time we have a donation request, and this one is for Jelly Roll, who testified before the Senate Committee on the Fentanyl Crisis, and that is certainly a very heavy topic to talk about. But it is a crisis nonetheless, and it is one that needs to be discussed, and it's one that needs some changes made to how it's handled. I feel as though Jelly Roll is the perfect person to talk about this, and I'm looking forward to hearing him speak on it. I have only heard Jelly Roll speak one other time in an interview with Joe Rogan, and I've never listened to Jelly Roll's music, although I've heard good things, and I would love to check some of it out. I know he has some songs when he came up with Up Church, and we just started checking out Up Church on the channel, so I would like to do that with Jelly Roll as well. But I got to spend two or three hours listening to Jelly Roll on the JRE, and it was great. I felt like I was just hanging out, getting to know who Jelly Roll is a, as a person and how he's grown and evolved his outlook on life as a human based on his prior transgressions. And I'm very much looking to hear his outlook on this. So thank you to Nikki for the donation. There are... Um, a couple different timestamps, so we will be making some cuts and getting to different parts of this testimony. But thank you, Nikki, for the donation. I do appreciate it. Much love to you, and much love to everyone who's tuning in right now. I hope that your day is going well wherever you are in the world. Thank you, uh, thank you Senator Scott. I'll introduce today's witnesses. Again, thanks for the three of you for joining us. Mr. Jason Jelly Roll D. Ford is a two-time Grammy nominee and CMT music awards winner. He sings about and advocates for those facing drug addiction. He consistently speaks directly with and for people struggling with addiction across the nation. Thank you for joining us and thank you for serving your nation. Uh, Mr. Patrick Yose is the National President of Fraternal Order of Police. President Yose, through his local law enforcement career, has held pivotal law enforcement leadership roles at the state, local and national levels, and thank you for serving communities in our nation, Mr. Yose. President Yose and Mr. Chris Furban is currently managing director at Nardello and Company. For that, he was a special agent in charge at DEA. He's a recognized expert on, on counter threat finance and anti money laundering investigations. Thank you for your career, uh, long career serving, serving the public. Um, start with Mr. DeFord. Welcome. For your first committee hearing, I assume. Uh, forgive me, I'm a little nervous. I'm used to having a rock and roll band behind me when I have a microphone in front of me. Um, during the time that I've been given to share my testimony here, I think it's important to note before I start that in these five minutes I'll be speaking that somebody in the United States will die of a drug overdose and it is almost a 72% chance that during those five minutes it will be fentanyl related. Having started that way, Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Scott, and esteemed committee members, thank you for having me. I know this is a bit of a curveball, but I like a little baseball myself. My name is Jason D. Ford, but to most I am known as Jelly Roll. I, it is important to establish earlier that I am a musician and that I have no political alliance. I am neither Democrat nor Republican. In fact, because of my past, my right to vote has been restricted. Thus far, I have never paid attention to a political race in my life. Ironically, I think that makes me the perfect person to speak about this because fentanyl transcends partisanship and ideology, gentlemen and women. This is a totally different problem. And uh, I was speaking outside to the media, and I, I gave them a statistic that said 190 people a day overdose and die every single day in the United States of America. That is about a 737 plane. That's what about a 737 aircraft can carry. Could you imagine the national media attention it would get if they were reporting that a plane was crashing every single day and killing 190 people? But because it's 190 drug addicts, we don't feel that way because America has been known to bully and shame drug addicts instead of dealing and trying to understand what the actual root of the problem is with that. But the sad news is that that narrative is changing too because the statistics say that in all likelihood, almost every person in this room has lost a friend, family member, or colleague to the disease known as addiction. I've attended more funerals than I care to share with y'all. This committee, I could sit here and cry for days about the caskets I've carried of people I loved dearly, deeply, in my soul, good people, 
not just drug addicts, uncles, friends, cousins, normal people, some people that just got in a car wreck and started taking a pain pill to manage it. One thing led to the other. And how fast it spirals out of control, I don't think people truly, truly understand. So many people. Equally, I think it's important for me to tell you all that I'm not here to defend the use of illegal drugs. And I also understand the paradox of my history as a drug dealer standing in front of this committee. But equally, I think that's what makes me perfect to talk about this. I was a part of the problem. I am here now standing as a man that wants to be a part of the solution. I brought my community down. I hurt people. I was the uneducated man in the kitchen playing chemists with drugs I knew absolutely nothing about, just like these drug dealers are doing right now when they're mixing every drug on the market with fentanyl, and they're killing the people we love. I'll be honest with y'all, my desire is to only get older and only do better and be better. I believed when I sold drugs genuinely that selling drugs was a victimless crime. I truly believe that, y'all. My father always told me, what doesn't get you in the wash will get you in the rinse. Now I have a 15-year-old daughter whose mother is a drug addict. Every day I get to look in the eyes of a victim in my household of the effects of drugs. Every single day. And every single day I have to wonder, if me and my wife, if today will be the day that I have to tell my daughter that her mother became a part of the national statistic. History repeats itself, gentlemen. Even in the 1990s, crack cocaine had long made its way into my middle lower class neighborhood. And at that moment, even as a teenager, you could have never convinced me in that moment that there would be a far bigger problem on the horizon in the form of a pharmaceutical drug. And then I watched opioids and Oxycontin burst onto the scene. I'm here to tell y'all that fentanyl is going to make the Sackler family look like saints. And I want to let y'all sit with that for a second. Hmm. And if you don't know who the Sackler family is, they... We're at the forefront of exactly what he's talking about. He mentioned the painkillers and the whole opioid epidemic. The Sackler family was at the forefront of that. They were the family, the head of Purdue Pharma, and they finally, finally, knowingly and admittedly were exposed for overprescribing drugs and all these opioids that were supposed to help people. That's what they were meant to do. They're meant to be a momentary thing to help people deal with their pain. Well, they created Oxycontin. And exactly like he's saying, they... Mm, there's documentaries on them. I'll say that. It pisses me off talking about these vile human beings that took advantage of people seeking help. <sighs> but yes, they made billions, hundreds of billions of dollars off of people just in need of help. And they knew what they were doing, too. And they took advantage of the whole cycle of, well, I need to get my prescription refilled. And they knew they could keep them coming back by getting them addicted to the painkillers. And then what happens? One thing leads to another. They're still chasing that high that they're getting. So maybe they'll turn to even harder stuff. And it's a dangerous game. It's a dangerous game they played with people. And they took advantage of them and ruined lives and had no remorse for it at all. They didn't care. They, they aided in the death of over a half a million people in the past 20 years. Just vile, awful people. And they actually talked about it on uh, the JRE. They talked about it on Joe Rogan's podcast several times. And if you haven't seen the documentary, definitely go check it out and learn more about it. But that's why he's comparing this, because fentanyl has not been spoken about, has not been exposed like the Sackler family finally was, but it needs to be, and now it's being discussed. And we don't want this to escalate like the Sackler family, Purdue Pharma, prescription opioid crisis has. 
It is time for us to be proactive and not reactive. We were reactive with crack. We were reactive with opioids. And y'all are taking the first step. It's somebody in Senate finally being proactive. I truly believe in my heart that this bill, that this bill will stop the supply and can help stop the supply of fentanyl. But in part of being proactive, gentlemen and, and women I, and, and ladies, I have to be frank and tell y'all that if we don't talk to the other side of Capitol Hill and stop the demand, we are going to spin our tires in the mud. Y'all are taking the first step, but I encourage you to take it outside of this room and you take it to your colleagues and your constituents and you give them the most that you can. I know I've got a few seconds here and Senator Brown said I may or may not go over. Um, all I want to say is that I not only encourage y'all to do this, I encourage y'all to take it a step further. At every concert I perform, I witness the heartbreaking impact of fentanyl. I see fans grappling with this tragedy in the form of music that they seek solace in music and hope that their experiences won't befall others. They crave reassurance. These are the people I'm here to speak for, y'all. These people crave reassurance that their elected officials actually care more about human life than they do about ideology and partisanship. I stand here as a regular member of society. I am a stupid songwriter, y'all, but I have firsthand witnessed this in a way most people have not. I encourage y'all to not only pass this bill, but I encourage you to bring it up where it matters at the kitchen table. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. D. Ford. Um, President Yost, welcome. Well, thank you, and good morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't, I don't think they could have a better speaker leading the charge for them than Jelly Roll here. He's a man of the people. He's just a normal guy who has had a long history. And he's still a young guy, too. He's not really that old, but he's had a long history and gone through a lot of troubles in his life. And that's exactly someone who deserves to be speaking on this topic because he's seen it firsthand. And he's giving a voice to those who feel like they don't have a voice and perhaps are afraid to speak and are afraid to reach out. Because people look down on drug addicts. It's just a common theme. And it's a sad thing to just look down on people who are hurting and then only want to hurt them more by showing disgust for them. And that's not what should happen. Those people are in need of help. And whether you hear them screaming or crying for help, you know they need help. And Jelly Roll knows that they need help. And that's why he's here to try and help them. And it's beautiful to hear him talk about it, and you can see how passionate he is and this man came prepared the everything he's saying this isn't just something to brush off this is coming from his heart he feels this immensely in his soul and i love that he came prepared and typed everything out <sighs> this is important to him and it should be to anybody who's affected by this i've been affected by crises like this and drug addiction and it's it hurts to hear but it hurts to think about too but it's going to hurt a lot more if you never hear it i'll begin with mr d ford uh through your music you've managed to make people across different communities feel heard by speaking about the challenges and struggles americans face when we spoke briefly before the hearing you used the term, you're a man of service. I've heard you say that publicly. You said it privately. I appreciate that. It's part of your recovery that people recovering from addiction, from addiction need to have a group of people speaking for them that look like, that look like them. Um, we have experts who speak to numbers and stats, but from your point of view, describe the everyday struggle of addiction, if you would. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's nothing less than devastating. It is truly the biggest crisis I've seen in America. It's... Um, I'm sad. I'm almost 40 years old, Senator Brown and, and Senator Scott. I have lived long enough to see almost every form of drug uh, that has came across since the 80s. And I grew up in a household that had multiple addicts and alcoholics in that household. I have seen drugs from an early age, and I can tell you that every alcohol I've seen and every drug I've seen, nothing has held a candle to what's happening with fentanyl in the United States of America. I'm seeing people shatter. I'm seeing families get broken. I'm seeing, like I spoke about in my speech, um, it's important to note that the real victims is, there's, there's a quote that says, the addict 
isn't the only person in the family that suffers from the symptoms of the addiction. The entire family suffers with the addict. The entire family rallies around the addict and carries that. The addict is, is not the only victim in this. It spreads far. Thank you. Most of us up here uh, can't sing all that well, but what we can do is legislate. What, would, um, what kind of signal would it send to the people you talk to who struggle to feel heard and seen if we come together in both houses as we have in the Senate? 23 nothing here and then the Senate floor. If we can do that in the House, what kind of signal will it be sent to the people whom you're fighting for? It's immeasurable. It's immeasurable because from the outside looking in, we don't see nothing happening in D.C. except fights. All we see is war and all we see is division. And it makes us feel unheard and unseen. And it makes us feel like our problems will always get caught in the middle of some kind of a partisan issue. And you and Senator Scott coming together and this committee has taken the first step that I think could be the beginning of the change that is needed in America, not just D.C. Because this isn't the only bipartisan bill that needs to be spoke about. It's the mountain in front of us. But there are many mountains behind that one that must be spoke about, too. And I applaud you all for taking the first step because me being here, I know for sure that some of my people are watching this right now. And for the first time ever, we feel heard. The voice, the voiceless feel like they have a voice in Washington, D.C. today, and I carry that with pride as I stand here with y'all. Thank you. Uh, President Yost, uh, tell us about how this crisis affects your office. Perfect. Exactly. That is 100% spot on. Relatability. That is exactly what is needed. Because it's not just these guys you see in the suit sitting behind the desk. They're not inherently relatable. But when you see someone like Jelly Roll, who is giving that voice to those who may look like him or relate to him or have a similar history like him, that is when people start to listen. Relatability. He's been there. He's done that. He's lived through it. And he wants to help other people live as well. He doesn't want them to become losses. He wants them to be able to live life. And without getting proper help, without being here and speaking on this, he feels like he's not doing them the proper service without speaking on their behalf. And that is great. And I'm glad to see someone like him in that seat. You know, he, he has witnessed, as he stated, all history of drugs and witnessed it firsthand in his own household. And this one is the worst he's seen. And that speaks volumes. And, you know, I've witnessed it firsthand too. And that's what makes this even more powerful is you, you're hearing from someone who has witnessed it firsthand and that makes it relatable to others who are either experiencing it or witnessing it firsthand. My, my dad's best friend passed, overdosed. She is the one who helped save my dad's life. Like, my dad would not be here if it wasn't for her. And he helped get her clean. And then she relapsed and was found with a needle in her arm. And that was it. And he still talks about it to this day, and it's been 20 years. So, yes, addiction and anything involved in that realm affects those around them as well. It's not just affecting the individual who is the addict. It affects, it's the domino effect. If it affects one person in the family, then it's going to latch on and affect another person. And I've seen that firsthand and it's, it's, it's a void creator. You know, if you lose someone you care dearly about, you're never going to be able to create more memories to cherish with them. That's all they will be is but a memory. And I've grown up with kids and they died before they even were 20 years old. Like they could, they were straight out of high school. They didn't even make it to their 19th birthday. And it, it, it's things that in inherently sound harmless. Well, you, maybe you just want to smoke a little bit of weed. But now they're lacing weed with fentanyl. And these are kids, man. 
These are kids. They don't know any better. They don't know that. They just want to get a little bit of marijuana and chill out. And then one day you never hear from them again. These are people I've grown up with that you get used to seeing on a daily basis until one day they just disappear. Because they were taken. Uh, Jelly Roll, quick question for you. Uh, as, as you know, uh, your, your family in Charleston, the probes are very close friends of mine. I called them just to say, hey, what, 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 tell me about Jelly Roll. The one thing they said was that he is authentic, he is sincere, and he speaks about the issues that has impacted his life. Yes, sir. And as a kid who grew up in poverty, I will say that sometimes the unseen and the unheard feel invisible. Mm. And one of the things that you're doing today is you're making visible those who still today feel like because of who they are, where they live, or what they do, they are somehow invisible. The challenge, of course, with drug addiction is it doesn't know a class or a race or a place. Mm. It's everywhere. Can you talk about the fact that, indeed, what we're talking about today impacts across all segments of our society in a devastating way? Senator What's amazing to see about this is the fact that we have all these suits sitting around this room. And looking at Jelly Roll in the middle of them, you would think he's on trial for something. Just at first glance. And you would think that they share nothing in common with one another. But everybody in that room has something in common. And that is, they were all affected by addiction. Whether knowingly or unknowingly, someone in there was at one time or another. And that's because addiction does not discriminate. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. It doesn't care. If you let it into your life, it will latch onto you. It will sink its teeth into you. And it will suck the life out of you until there's nothing left. Sometimes addiction is staring you right in the face and you won't even know it. It could be in the form of someone who just looks at you and they're smiling and they're happy. And they will tell you that there is nothing wrong. And you won't know that anything is wrong. Until it's too late. And then. That is what is going to stick with you. That wonder of. What could you have done. To stop that from happening. Because it's not just the ones you don't see. The ones who hide. And are addicted. There are those that are addicted. That you're around every day. And you don't even know it. You may not have. Been able to do anything then. Because perhaps you didn't know. But now, having known, having seen that, now's the time for change. Now's the time to do something. And that is exactly what's happening here. Because addiction doesn't care what you look like. But it will take shape of someone you recognize. And it will take the form of them. And then... They'll be unrecognizable. Senator Scott, thank you. I, I was hoping to share this, so you bringing it up means a lot. I have the opportunity to go sing at dozens of rehab facilities a year and dozens of jails and prisons. Every time we do a show in a city, we go to their local jail or their local rehab and sing songs for them to encourage people. And in rehabs across America, I can tell you with certainty, I have seen everything from governor's children's in the same rehab as kids that have been homeless since they were 12. Mm. I mean, when I tell you that this drug, it has finally reached to the point, like I said, that we used to look at addicts and shame them, but now it's hard to because the rest of the world's finally realizing that the addict is actually their nephew. Mm -hmm. It's their cousin, and they know their cousin was a good person. They know that this isn't the actions of the cousin they know. They know this is the actions of the drugs. Senator Scott, uh, Chairman Brown, I assure you that this touches every single human, white, black, every ethnicity, every race, everywhere in the United States of America. It is touching and, help and hurting people and killing people. And that's why what y'all are doing is so important. It's bringing people together. It's making the unseen fiends felt seen. The voiceless have a voice, and we can't thank y'all enough for it. Um. 
Thank God that Congress can come together, not in a bipartisan way, but in a nonpartisan way to address the issues and the challenges facing Americans all over this country. And I certainly hope that my friends in the House are paying attention today because it not already being a law is a travesty. And I certainly hope my colleagues on the other side of the Capitol will take up this fend off fentanyl and get it done. Thank you, Senator Scott. That's Senator Menendez of New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think we, in order to comp Candidly, gentlemen, there's not much that Congress can do to make uh, President Xi stop uh, his country from producing the precursor chemicals. I've met with President Xi personally in Beijing. Beijing. I don't think it did much good. And candidly, there's not much the United States Congress can do to make uh, President Lopez Obrador in Mexico stop the cartels. He knows what's going on. There are two things that we can do. First, we, meaning Congress, we can secure the border. It's an open, bleeding wound. And it is wide open. And it is wide open by design. I've seen it. Most of the members of this committee have. That's not what I want to talk about. The other thing that Congress can do is crack down on the dealers, not the addicts, Mr. DeFord, the dealers. Now, Mr. Urban, see this pencil? Yes, sir. This pencil tip, the amount of fentanyl just in a pencil temp, uh, tip, as represented by a pencil tip, will kill you dead. Dead is fried chicken, Mr. DeFord. I hope that's southern enough for you. Um, you see this, 40 grams? Yes, sir. This will kill every man, woman, and child in Culpeper, Virginia, not far from here. If you have this much fentanyl, you're a dealer. This is 400 grams. This will kill every man, woman, and child in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, you're a dealer. You're not holding this much fentanyl. That's you're not dealing. Now, 40 grams. This will get you, if you get caught, a minimum of five years. Okay? 400 That's grams, it. if you get caught with this much, enough to kill every man, woman, and child in Knoxville, even before, and, and many more before you step on it, this will get you 10 years. Minimum. There's just one problem. That's it. Are you we punish other drugs less severely than we do the most powerful drug, fentanyl. I mean, just look at it. 40 grams, five years. 400 grams for fentanyl. 10 years. Methamphetamines? Five grams will get you five years. 50 grams will get you 10 years. Much less severely than fentanyl. We do the same thing for PCP. We do the same thing for crack cocaine. What you allow, gentlemen, is what will continue. Now, I support the Fentanyl Ratification Act uh, that we've talked about today, but I also support something else. I support another bill, uh, the Fairness and Fentanyl Sentencing Act. And it would, uh, it would lower the five-year mandatory minimum threshold from 40 grams of fentanyl to two grams. 
and it would lower the 10-year man mandatory min minimum for 400 grams to 20 grams. And we ought to pass it, too. What you allow is what will continue. I'm going to yield back, Chairman Brown, my 14 seconds to, uh, to make up for my past transgressions. It doesn't, but that's fine. Uh, Senator Warner of Virginia. Oh, oh, thank you. What you allow is what will continue. Wow. And that is just a prime example right there of one of the innumerable ways that the system is flawed. It's absolutely pathetic that that right there, like he explained, the amounts could kill a county, it could kill an entire city, and the most you're going to get is five to ten years. Five to ten years. That's disgusting. There, there is people who have been in jail longer, imprisoned longer, for just dealing marijuana. Something that has way less of a harmful effect than fentanyl. Now, if that ain't a flaw, then I don't know what is. That is... That's absolutely pathetic. I mean, I, there's no other way to put it. You remember when Tupac said, instead of a war on poverty, they got a war on drugs so the police can bother me? You remember that? No, I've been on the basketball court with kids one day and seen them happy as can be. And then come back the next day and I never see them again. It's crazy that exactly what they're talking about, these chemists in these kitchens, they probably have no remorse for what they're doing. They don't care. Because they don't see the lasting effects that the addiction that someone faces has on everybody around them. They use fentanyl in hospitals. Very minute amounts. But then you have these chemists, these home chemists, who suddenly think they're a doctor who should be prescribing this stuff, who should be lacing these drugs and ruining people's lives. And that is all their sentence is going to be? That's it. It takes someone who has been through addiction and made it out the other side after battling with it to be able to relate to those who are still going through it and be able to extend that hand in help. And it is great to see Jelly Roll in that seat, advocating for those who need that help. We recently lost someone who spent years trying to help others and advocating for those who are addicted because he spent years being addicted and he knew exactly what it was like. Matthew Perry. We lost him. And to those of you who have made it through the fire and the flames of addiction, I'm proud of you. And to those who are still going through it, you can do it and you will do it. You will get through it. This needs to be heard. It needs to be seen. It needs to be discussed. And it's good that we have someone with an authentic soul like Jelly Roll at the forefront of this charge. So if you needed any motivation at all to reach out to those in need or someone around you who is trying to push people away from them, don't let them. This is when they need you now more than ever. So thank you to Nikki who donated for this. It means a lot and it really does really does open your mind and help you think about these things. So I need I needed to hear this as well. And I appreciate you requesting this. So thank you. I hope that you guys are doing well, man. Wherever you are in the world, 
I hope that your day is going well and continues to do well. And I hope that you continue to be well. So you guys enjoy your day or try to at least. Much love.